Good morning, Chairperson. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Honorable Dennis, and good morning to everybody. How are you, Chairperson? How are you? How no. are we all being? Um, we hundred percent fine. Good, good. That's good to hear, Chip. Yeah, I did take the instruction on Wednesday. I had to go to the doctor, and I was yeah. having a flu medication, and yeah. that's why I managed to be mm. in Pretoria in the netball on Saturday. Mm. Oh, yes, that was a yeah. <laughs> When Solomon <laughs> saw me there jumping and jumping, said, how oh, Chaperson, I've said, no, I did consult the doctor. <laughs> it was just a flu. Yes, yes. And it was good, uh, good result for the netball. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've enjoyed that. With Mr. Mshongo, we always cheering and, morning, 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 and re rejoicing. Hello, Honorable Mshongo. Morning, colleagues. Morning, Chair. Morning to everybody. We must book our tickets in advance for the World Cup netball cheaper. Hey, I wish, I wish, hey, the, I wish that at least one of uh, these um, outgoing. Uh, trips of our uh, any any sport coat we must but uh, especially now that in netball it's yes it's it's, it's so the, for the first time in South Africa and Africa uh, and Africa well. let, 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 and Africa let's pursue uh, uh, our parliament that at least. Uh, we've been not going nowhere. Yes, Let's first, just parliament. Them. yes. first parliament. First <laughs> parliament. Yeah, <laughs> first parliament. And, and even the other parliament, we didn't go anywhere as this committee with uh, Honorable <clears throat> Mplongo. He knows we want it, uh, but all in vain. Uh, I'm suspecting I must just start the meeting. Our agenda, it's a uh, it's not that long, but because we have our sister departments, um, I wanted even to have a very short uh, opening remarks when I was looking now in the agenda and the apologies of some of uh, these sister departments. Also today, they have their own meetings. So honorable members, uh, good morning to everybody. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing that already. Uh, our office is putting uh, our agenda uh, in our screens. Uh, maybe let me take this opportunity to, to greet everyone. Uh, I know that we have our sister departments here. Um, two of them joining the, our own department. But first and foremost, not taking your time. 
a so many good things happen this weekend and also the bad ones. Uh, we are aware that uh, this is the season where all sport coats uh, of, of South Africa is all out and the, most of the, them, they are making us proud. I can mention them, uh, but to save the, the time, I've seen even one thing that I was not aware, uh, the basketball of boys under 23 who are uh, uh, called them uh, disabled. Uh, so whilst we are not using that word as, as this parliament, we're saying they are challenged, but uh, I've listened when they were saying that because we are disabled, but we are doing well in the basketball as uh, champions of Africa 2022. Uh, I cannot not to mention our own uh, netball, uh, South Africa. Uh, it was not only on Saturday that uh, we've been uh, watching and some, they were not starting only Saturday to go and experience and watch the, the match. Uh, thank you, Honorable Mshongo. I'm suspecting it was the second time that uh, he was there physically. But uh, Honorable members and our guests, uh, our department, uh, I'm, I'm aware that uh, in each and every department, especially of sport and uh, I've seen the, 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 the new premier of KZN sharing condolences with the Comrade Marathon uh, uh, leadership. Uh, that tragedy which happened this weekend whilst we were enjoying uh, to see them again out after a long time of uh, COVID. But uh, condolences to the two families uh, who have uh, got those bad news that um, their loved ones passed on whilst they were in the enjoying them uh, on that day let alone those who are still in the, in the ICU hospital. So this is, this is not on, uh, but what can we do as this committee? We are sharing condolences to the organizers, to the families, and to the entire sport-loving people of South Africa. And it was not only South Africa, they were even uh, international one, but congratulations to those who have won. But today here we are uh, with these sister departments uh, because the only thing that today we want to hear is that the, the importance of the language, the languages and the, the aspect of our identity as human uh, beings let alone that human beings, but most importantly, society, uh, which is the deaf community, which have always been on the back foot of, um, of, of, <coughs> so they've been in the back foot, uh, these uh, communities, uh, not knowing what to do and not having to, know what they can do with the language because they, they were not uh, then recognized. And I'm, I'm happy that Department of Education, Department of uh, Justice, they are here today. And therefore, uh, that's why now we are aware that uh, the, this Department of uh, Sport, Arts and Culture proposed amendment bill and that amendment bill, which was uh, called South African Sign Language, 
uh, of as the 12th official language of South Africa. And I know that uh, even the, the, the board from uh, South African Sign Language is with us. And, and as we're here, we would love to get to know uh, the, the budget and the time fl frames from uh, the, the department and this sister department also, they are going to play a role uh, in, in, in the question of a, a budget and their time frames. So uh, I can't uh, dwell much because we are waiting to both of them to tell us uh, what they are uh, expecting to finalize this bill. Um, in the next uh, item in our agenda is I was trying to welcome you, uh, honorable members and honorable visitors of ours. Uh, let now to check uh, with the agenda uh, that um, can our officials, uh, both officials, Department of Arts and Culture, a, a basic education and uh, the Department of Justice give us the apologies. Uh, let me start with the Department of Arts, Sport, Arts and Culture. Apologies. Chabu, apologies. Zolega, apologies. Uh, good morning, Chair. Good morning, members. Good morning, everybody. Uh, Chair, we have an apology from the Minister. He's uh, currently in Scotland to participate in the 6th Edinburgh Cultural Summit. We also have an apology from the DM who is in a work-related commitment and thereafter she'll be traveling for the three-line whip uh, today. And then Chair, uh, oh, I see Mamu Veronica is in the meeting, but she'll be in and out of the meeting before she's um, at the doctor's. Uh, she's indicated that she'll be in and out of the meeting. And Chair, the um, Deputy Minister of uh, Justice and Correctional Services was going to join the meeting, but uh, there is a, a portfolio committee uh, meeting that he'll be attending uh, of the um, Justice and Correctional Services today, Chair. Those are the apologies, Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Um, any other apologies from uh, Uh, from the delegation, from the delegation of, uh, oh yes, um, Kumar, um, thank Kumar. you very, um, thank you very much, uh, Chairperson. I hope I'm audible. Uh, it is Dr. Kumalo DDG as Culture Promotion and Development. Can I please table the apology we received from the CEO of Kensal? Um, he is represented uh, by a senior official uh, today, but he has forwarded his apology as he's uh, unable to attend you to other um, work commitments. Thank you, Chair. Who's presenting him? Um, it's, uh, um, sorry, Chair. It's Mr. Julius Dantile, who is with us in the meeting from Pencil. Okay. Any other apologies? Uh, let me come to the Department of Basic Education. Good morning, Chairperson. My name Good is morning. Regina. Um, yeah. <laughs> My name is Regina Mhaule from Basic Education. We are with the DG in this meeting and the chief director responsible for examination. So the minister is attending to the portfolio committee. We have a joint portfolio committee meeting with a, a social development. So it's a sitting now. So I am representing the department together with the DG in this meeting. Thank you, Chief. And we other started, Okay. We started to see now the importance of uh, having a minister and deputy minister of um, now you are sharing responsibility. Thank you, DM. Uh, 
the Ministry of uh, the uh, what, what, uh, Justice and Correctional Service. Uh, th thank, thank you, Chair. Uh, Chair, as uh, it has been related that uh, the Deputy Minister was going to attend this meeting, this meeting clashes with the Portfolio Committee of uh, of justice where the executive is required to make representations. Uh, also, there's a, an apology from the minister who is uh, currently in Limpopo addressing a provincial symposium. So he is unable to join as well. However, there are senior officials from the Department of Justice that will be uh, making uh, presentations in this meeting. Uh, thank you, Chair. Who are those? Please mention them name, because I will be looking at our uh, attendance in order that some board who has been not mentioned, uh, he or she is supposed not to be in this meeting. Can you mention your delegation? Mr. Mfuzo, Sincele, who are here? Yeah, no, th thank you, Chair. Uh, uh, Mr. Mr. Tietzi, uh, Sebele Major, uh, will is 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 here, and also Mr. Rigo Baloui will be sharing the presentation. Uh, I'm not sure other officials that are here. I uh, see Pumolo. Can you uh, tell us, uh, uh, Mr. Tietzi, what is the his role in the department and Three of them tell who are they, the entitlement of themselves in the department. Okay. Okay. Can, 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 can I request Mr. Tietz to come in and then and then you will okay. be able to share the rest of the delegation? Thank you, Chair. Uh, uh, yes, uh, okay. Mr. Tietz. Yeah, thank you. I'm, I'm using a cell phone because I'm juggling. Okay. Uh, sorry, Chair. The, my name is Tia Tisevili Mech. I'm the Chief Director responsible for legislative development. Okay. And Mrs. Reho Baloi, it's Reho Mudito in full name, Baloi. She's a state law advisor. She'll be the one assisting because the item in the portfolio committee involves my area of responsibility. So I'll be juggling between the two meetings, uh, Chair. Uh, but otherwise, uh, the two of us are from the legislative development unit that is responsible for the uh, the bill that we're going to be processing. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, uh, honorable members, uh, can uh, honorable members uh, note the, the apologies and then can we adopt the agenda I need someone to 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 propose the adoption of the agenda. Uh, Honorable uh, Adams. Thank you, Chairperson. Chairperson, good morning. Good morning. I propose the adoption of the agenda. I thank you. Any second? Thank you, Honorable Adams. To do Sibia. Honorable. Okay, thanks, Chaperson. Um, I would like to second the adoption of the agenda. Thanks. Thank you, Honorable Tutu Sibia. Honorable members, uh, the agenda has been adopted. Um, we must not forget that uh, today, also, Honorable members, there will be a driving getting to the buses by 12.30 uh, because we have a hybrid plenary. So uh, I'm just reminding you, honorable members, I'm not saying you must not do justice in this um, meeting. Now I'm giving uh, the, the first uh, uh, department, I've seen that according to agenda, is saying that is a joint a presentation of a department and uh, the pen South African sign language. Can somebody do that? Thank you. Department of 
sport, arts, and culture. Uh, good morning. Uh, oh, sorry, uh, sorry, DJ. Good morning, uh, honorable chairperson and honorable members. Is the Director General Department of Sport, Arts and Culture. Yes, I, am, I am with my team, uh, Jefferson, led by the DTG, Dr. Komalu, who introduced herself earlier. The Chief Director, Ms. Lisa Kombrink, as well as uh, Ms. Ndima. And then the two advisors to the Minister, Mr. Mchamzache, as well as Mr. Law as well as the Parliamentary Liaison Officer, Mr. Kanunu, as well as Office of the Deputy Minister, Mr. Watani, and uh, my office, uh, Mr. Ralipipi, as well as Ms. Ramalete. Uh, that is a team that is here, Honorable Chairperson. As we know, that language is a career of our, may I then greet the Deputy Minister from DPE, as well as the DG, and the colleagues from both the Department of Justice and Correctional Services, as well as my colleagues from Pencil. Uh, Honorable Chairperson, we come here on a very significant issue about language. Language is a career of culture. It is transmission of our identity from one generation to another. And we are happy that uh, this meeting is taking place against the background of all of us being the joint responsibility departments for ensuring that language is indeed promoted and that the act itself is, is, is indeed effected relating to the sign language, which has excluded about 500,000 people in this country who are dependent solely on this, but also that we do have a library for the blind that has made advancements in relation to promoting the issue of sign language and also serving people and providing access to the people who are partially sighted. So Jefferson, the presentation is a joint presentation that will be then led by both the DG Dr. Kumaro, just on the background, and then where the bulk of it will then be led by our entity, which is also a constitutional um, body, which is the pencil, which will then have a direct presentation relating to what is being done in relation to the issues of language, particularly the inclusion of the sign language as an official language. Over to you. Thank you, DJ. DJ, DJ, DJ. Um, thank you very much, Chairperson. Um, um, thank you, DG. Um, let me just maybe or just to go on on um, making the um, committee aware of uh, the who else is here. Uh, DG has indicated that uh, the chief director is accompanied by Miss Ndima who is the Director for Language Planning and Policy Matters. But I also wanted to just indicate that we also have brought along the Director in the department who's in charge of human language technologies, uh, Mr. Mabasa, Tsikani Mabasa, a uh, person. And, and I think uh, we, we really thought we'll bring this delegation so that um, as the committee engages with our presentation, we will be able to give um, responses in all aspects. So I would, as DG has indicated, uh, take the committee through the first two slides of this uh, combined uh, presentation. And then Mr. Dantile will take over from Pensab will take over and um, um, complete, um, go through the, the, the presentation, the rest of the presentation. Chairperson, I do need to also indicate that um, in our presentation that we have prepared, there are inputs uh, that we got from uh, the Department of Basic Education, 
and also from the Department of Justice and Correctional Services. However, I do believe that they would also be taking uh, the committee further through uh, what they have also prepared. Um, if you can please go to the next slide. Um, so the, the background that we just wanted to give uh, for the committee um, is to just reflect um, on what happened um, on in 2016, um, as indicated uh, here, we are making reference um, to the submission that was received by the Joint Constitutional Review Committee. And, and also together with, uh, sorry, my screen, sorry, Chairperson, my screen is just moving around. Um, which was submitted and also uh, submitted by Sander, as, as we indicate in, in the slide that is reflected, um, where there was a proposal um, that was made by this, um, through these submissions uh, for the amendments to the constitution to include the South African um, sign language as an official language. Um, um, and then we are going to be giving indication of the developments uh, that then transpired as, as of the, we also give indication uh, here in this slide, a uh, person um, of the fact that the a petition by the deaf, um, the community of, of, de of, of, of deaf SA called upon the National Assembly to effect a constitutional mandate um, in order to uh, also recognize the sign language as an official language or as the 12th language of the Republic of South Africa. And this was tabled in the assembly uh, in also 10th of, of October, 2016. And during the commemoration of the 20 years of the constitution in 2016, the NCOP noted that PENSAL referred to in section 6.5 of the constitution indicated that the South African, the sign language could soon become one of the official languages. We further just going into the background, uh, chairperson and members uh, indicate uh, that during the state of the nation address that was tabled by the president in February, 2020, um, it was noted that the recommendation of the committee ought to be finalized, that was done by the president. And then on the 25th of May, 2022, the cabinet approved that the constitution um, 18th amendment bill 2022 be published for public comment. This proposed amendment uh, will give recognition um, to the sign language, South African Sign Language as the 12th uh, official language of South Africa. And the bill was published in the Gazette on the 19th of July, 2022. This bill is open for public comment for a period of 30 working days from the date of publication upon all comments being received and consolidated our colleagues, the Department of Justice and, and uh, would then seek to introduce the bill to parliament. PENSAL is already engaged in translation and recording of the South African national anthem um, and in, into the sign language. They further conducted provincial workshops aimed at bridging the gap between the deaf and the hearing uh, communities. So Mr. Dantile will then take over and go into the detail of the work that has been done and the status, including the issues of budget uh, to a person um, that you also highlighted, which is covered in, in the presentation. Um, over to you, Julius. Um, morning, honorable uh, members um, of parliament. Um, I don't know whether you can see me and hear me. We do, we do see you, Mr. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. You can switch off um, your video if, you, if we are comfortable. Yes, okay. okay. Um, thank you very much, um, Chair. Um, thank you very much, um, Dr. Kumalo. Thank you very much, DG. And uh, morning to all present, uh, Bodani, Lochani, Dumelan, um, <laughs> honorable members. Um, it's just a small practice of uh, Mo, uh, basic Molue, Molue, Molue. Yeah, yeah, Molue, Molue is a modern one. A modern is the original one. Um, That's yeah, we can go. Yeah, yes, we can. Waleni, Waleni, Waleni. <laughs> Molue, Molue comes from a uh, more so Mol um, oh. Africans, yeah, Molo. So, but you yeah, see, it's a, it's nice a composite of language. 
You know, yeah, we see that we, we, I, we, it's nice that you are here today whilst you are uh, looking at uh, the 1st of September in our, our month of culture. Thank you so yes. much for that. Thank you very much. Um, as um, Dr. Kumalo has um, um, alluded that Pensal um, started a, a program, a, pro, a project um, of um, um, standardizing the national anthem. What we um, uh, discovered uh, through our um, South African Sign Language National Language Body um, is that the, 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 there was no standard um, signing of the national anthem. Each one interpreter would then decide how it uses what, um, um, uh, uh, which signs, um, sometimes depending on the variety or on the dialect that that particular interpreter is um, 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 acquainted with. And we, we, we did that particular project and it was successful. We launched it last year um, around uh, November. And the project took us about 16 months to 16 to 18 months to really consolidate it uh, with at least um, um, a huge consultation, extensive consultations um, so that um, the sign language um, and deaf community can feel represented and can feel that they have made a contribution in terms of that. It was the test of what we, we, we would be engaging in going forward in terms of standardizing the, the lexicon of um, um, a, a sign language. Um, currently, a sign language has got a challenge in terms of varieties, um, like any other language, by the way. Um, they've got a lot of varieties. They are kind of uh, even um, town-based varieties within um, the signing systems that they are, they are using. Um, and, and also they're much more influenced by um, the American sign language and they are striving to adapt um, to um, um, the South African sign language. And it's a process that you see when we articulate um, it here. In the workshops that we were we are conducting annually, uh, but the last year's one, there was a, a cry from the parents of deaf children in which they indicated that they cannot communicate with their own kids. And some of the parents even um, were in tears to say, my kid doesn't want to go ho come home during holidays because most of these schools are, are not daily schools, they are um, boarding schools. So once you send your kid into a boarding school, um, the kid comes back, is unable to communicate with the family, let alone the immediate community. So we immediately initiated um, workshops and um, kind of interventions um, to make sure that um, at least those parents and, and those kids are kind of brought together um, in a kind of therapeutic way and also be uh, parents be taught some basics um, of, of, of basic communication um, in, in sign language. That program was done in all the seven uh, provinces with um, a KZN and Gauteng um, uh, not um, uh, being undertaken in the last financial year. We are in the process of uh, consolidating those now. What is also um, interesting about this one uh, project, um, members, honorable members, is that uh, we want we, we we initiated the first phase of just uh, uh, bringing the basics in terms of the families understanding um, and getting to be able to communicate um, with their own um, children. But then uh, we have to move further to provide um, also the basic training. Um, in sign language um, beyond just a communicative level so that they, they, the families can be able to then uh, communicate uh, deeper with their own kids and understand what um, um, they say and how they say that. Then, um, then that would be further be taken through to other levels of ensuring that 
that communication is expanded beyond the family environment so that when these kids are coming back to their communities, they've got um, the people to communicate with and they feel welcomed um, around their mm -hmm. own communities. Um, we uh, also um, engaged in the dictionary production uh, within the sign language, which is an app uh, that is done by this independent stakeholder, the National Institute um, for the Deaf. Um, PENSAG through um, um, the NLB, the National Language Body, has been able to verify and authenticate those particular terms so that they can be um, accepted um, and verified. We'll be launching this dictionary on Thursday, um, mm -hmm. on the 1st of September, because it is also a, 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 a Deaf Awareness Month. So we usually intensify our programs around that particular process. So um, all the kind of stakeholders have been invited and um, they're part of that, including uh, the Department of Sports, Arts and Culture is part of that. Uh, we are launching it on the 1st. Then um, the standardization program, that is the one that the, the lexical standardization is the one, it's a long-term program that we have to undertake it so that the sign language can be uh, used at um, a higher genres um, or higher registers, um, for instance, in, 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 in court of laws, um, in, by government, at all aspects, not just on the basis of interpreting, but also on the basis of being able to produce some of the materials in the, um, in the true sign language. And with this one, we have consulted with um, uh, six out of seven universities that offer either uh, South African Sign Language courses or they're doing research um, um, on sign language or they are um, providing the service itself to their own uh, deaf community um, in their institutions. And those um, um, consultations included the National Institute for the Deaf, the one that we are um, launching the dictionary with um, on, on Thursday, 1st September, and also the Sign Language um, Education Development led we, we met with them. We are trying to formulate a consortium that will strive to um, push this kind of um, standardization without um, um, uh, leaving anyone behind or without um, uh, uh, discriminating um, um, of any variety. Um, like in any language, you, you must have at least a standard that you adhere to, especially when you are writing in the other languages, but also here when you are signing, you must have at least certain standards because there are, is, it's very easy to offend the community because um, especially the hearing people do not understand the deaf culture. And we always think that they are too sensitive, but it's because of our own behaviors um, across them and around them. And then um, we have a, a South African um, sign language charter that was developed um, a couple of years ago um, and it was launched and um, it's all about the pledges that has to be undertaken and is derived from um, the rights um, in, the, um, 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 in, the, in the Bill of Rights. Also, it's also um, a charter that is linked to the um, uh, section um, two, three, four of the constitution, where it talks about the, the charters um, um, of the rights. Um, so we, we derived it from for this community so that national governments, even uh, let, let me put it, government across the board is able to have reference on the responsibilities um, it has towards this particular community so that this particular community cannot uh, continuously feel uh, uh, being in the periphery uh, in terms of the um, uh, public life um, in this country. Um, that charter is gonna be reviewed over a period of years. Um, so it, I think it's due now for review in 2025. So, um, but we will also come in and, and make a, a a, a, a public um, engagement around it. With the consortium where that I spoke to, we are intending over years and when we have budgets 
to establish uh, what is called um, a South African Sign Language National Lexicography Unit. Um, lexicography Unit are, diction are dictionary com com compiling units, and um, they are within pencil, and um, they, they look at, um, at the development of the language across the board. I will be also presenting what um, are the preparations by the um, DSEC. Um, they are engaging with us in terms of the uh, creating awareness. We work together um, as different stakeholders, but they are involved in that. They intend, um, uh, honorable members, to um, amend the use of Official Languages Act um, 20 in, uh, so that it can be in line with the constitution in terms of once the, um, the sign language is officialized. Also, um, I think it is the responsibility of the department to um, um, amend the PENSAP Act um, in terms of this so that also it can be aligned accordingly uh, to the constitution once the uh, South African sign language um, has been officialized. And then um, uh, national departments will be then informed to review their a language policies so that um, um, a sign language can then be recognized as an official language. And there are implications in terms of those and the whole language facilitation processes, staffing and all that will be required from the national departments. Um, but the sample of that kind of cost is, is gonna be given out of the two departments, uh, which is the Department um, of uh, Sports, Arts and Culture and the Department of Justice. Some of the programs that they are intending to um, undertake from the district side is digitalizing um, of um, South African Sign Language, which then um, talks to um, the, late, the era that we are in, the 4IR, in terms of the use of the latest technologies in the development of um, languages, and also in making sure that that process is being um, fast-tracked and um, uh, utilized accordingly. Um, I like to give a, an example here, um, uh, uh, honorable members, that Europe has moved from 14 languages to 24 languages within a period of two years, and the European, European Union, and they are undertaking um, a translation of documents um, into those 24 languages within a period of 24 hours. So whatever document that is produced by European Union, it is made available within 24 hours in all the other 24 um, languages. If that document was from um, as you, was uh, generated in French, then it is translated into all other 24 languages and they're increasing um, to 29. Um, so it is very important to have um, those kind of um, uh, 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 technologies um, um, to be utilized accordingly um, as it is uh, for instance here, video uh, materials for the sign language. And it should be understood that that is also a highly um, um, cost uh, 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 intensive process in terms of producing those kind of video materials. And this is, this is the technology that I'm talking about. Um, especially that this is a visual language where um, whatever you do, it has to be um, uh, represented by a visual um, articulation is um, not only just um, written articulation, which is not very um, um, easy to get into. Um, next slide. And then um, they, they will be, we will be consult, um, uh, uh, doing these workshops with the department um, in these communities uh, for the sign language and bringing the, aware, the awareness um, on issues of um, why we need standardization, what are the purposes of that and stuff like that? Because there is a lot of resistance around this, uh, but in any language you'll find that exists, um, be it in English, that's why we've got um, a lot of Englishes. They, after some time, are accepted that uh, you have to contextualize um, English into the particular language, but that is um, really the, where the process is. Um, there is um, a concern, uh, is my, can you hear my voice now? Yes. Okay, yeah. Um, so um, the department um, and also all the national departments um, require to have a language a practitioners, including sign language, um, and be compliant to the um, a, a EULA Act, which says that departments should establish a language units. Language units 
things are established when there are resources, be it financial, human, and even time factors around these particular issues. Um, again, it's just a summary for the, for, for the Department of Education. They will be doing their own presentation, but um, that is um, a, a progressive department where sign language is already recognized as, 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 as an official language. And it is used uh, for as a language of teaching and learning um, uh, in terms of section six, subsection four of the South African Schools Act. And um, that, that is a progressive element that we want to see um, taking place across the country. They are using um, um, sign language as a home language within the curriculum statement from grade R to grade 12. And um, they have been doing that since um, uh, 2014. Um, currently, there are 47 um, uh, schools for the deaf in South Africa using um, this language um, as a language of teaching and um, uh, learning. So um, this is to really uh, recognize that uh, progressive element by the department. So um, these are the issues that um, have the implication within the Department of Sports, Arts and Culture or within the whole sector, education sector, um, within government as a whole, um, that this language should be officialized. And um, then the responsibilities associated uh, with those should then be um, looked at um, resources provided accordingly with uh, various projections that I'm going to give um, 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 in the following slide. The department wants to um, do the digitalization in which I articulated earlier, that is the budget around 8 million per annum. And um, these are not a once off um, projects uh, because technology changes and technology improve. So they require that amount. And also for the um, translations um, translation of, of document, the one other pro another project is sign language technology in which also we work with uh, in terms of authentication and verification and also those workshops. In total, they are requiring about 18.5 million in terms of um, the required budget. I believe that they don't really have that money currently. Um, also uh, with Pan South African Language Board, as I said, we want to provide that basic training um, and um, uh, to, the, to the parents. And annually, we are looking at 1.5 million. And then um, the launch of the dictionary and the verification processes of other terminologies. At least we need uh, 1 million per annum. Then the lexical standardization where we lead to um, um, establishment of um, sign language, we need those particular amounts of money. In total, as the South African Language Board, we need um, 18.5 million, which we don't have currently in terms of our budget. The Department of Education um, requires in total a, a, a about 55 million. And out of that 55 million that they require, they require it for various programs that they have, especially the learner support programs and also teacher development. Those are the critical, critical um, projects uh, that has to be undertaken, especially that there's already a complaint um, um, around the uh, appointment of uh, teachers in the Department of Education, in, in those schools, teachers who are qualified for teaching the subjects, but they, cannot, they do not have basics in terms of um, the actual uh, use of um, uh, sign language, but that will be elaborated further by the department itself. So they need around um, 87 million the total that we need to initiate this in the next um, financial year. Um, at, out of the three departments, um, think about also further other departments, the Department of Health, Department um, um, South African uh, Police um, and so forth. So you would then um, uh, uh, calculate those and replicate them further in terms of looking at what um, resources required by government to make sure that they adhere to this. Um, the digitalization process is in progress. And it is, as I said, and these are continuous projects, um, all of them and others, uh, for instance, the translation and the development of sign language technology and the workshop. The other ones that will be starting in the next financial year. Once the once the resources are run, sorry. 
from the pencil side, we have completed the national anthem. It is available. I think you can go to our website if you want to get the video. Um, it's available for of charge. It can be used uh, when um, the national anthem is being sung um, in, in events. Um, the workshops are the ones that we are looking at. We want one, one workshop in which then we can augment that with the ones that will be working with the departments in terms of that particular those particular items so that we don't duplicate each other, but we, um, we, 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 we collaborate and embrace each other's programs. That's what we usually do. Try to do. round up. Try to round yes, up. Yes, um, thank you, Chair. Um, these are the just some of the projects are coming, uh, including the establishment of the South African language um, lexicography unit. Um, that is the funds. Um, we need to start with some of these programs accordingly. I think that is the, the going for the last last slide now, Chair. Can we go to the last slide? Yes, some of these programs um, are focused and, and some of them are already in progress. Um, we, we appreciate um, the, the, the provision of this information by the department. So um, thank you very much on that note, um, Chair. Um, that is the summary over to you, Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Siabonga, Siabule, Lala, Reboja, Mr. Chaboka, Tantile. And also thank you to the DG, the DG. Uh, in that note, let me come to our sister department of basic education, which I'm aware that is led by our deputy minister. Uh, to you, deputy minister. Excuse me. Yeah. Thank you, Chair. Uh, this is the presentation or oh, greetings to you, Chair, and greetings to all the members of the Portfolio Committee joint uh, and greetings to our sister departments. Chair, this is the presentation by the Department of Basic Education, especially on the South African Sign Language. So, Chair, in education, maybe we, we before parliament could enact it, but already officially, we are using the sign language as the 12th, 12th language in the country. So, but we hope and believe that uh, these matters will be fast tracked in parliament that it becomes officially, because mm -hmm. you can see in all our gatherings, we need these services of sign language and the, the people that need that are also attending the gathering. So, we are presenting, the teacher is here, but the actual person that is going to give the presentation is Dr. Polia. But uh, maybe to allow the teacher to give short introductions. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, DM. DG. Thank you, Honorable Chair, Honorable Members, Honorable Deputy Minister, uh, DM. Uh, Dr. Pulia will just forge ahead immediately to do the presentation. The Deputy Minister has given an excellent overview. Uh, so I want to... We want to see you. We want to see you. We want to see you. I'm driving, Deputy Minister. <laughs> okay. I'm driving. I'm in the pit latrines. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, give it to somebody who's who can show uh, his face or her face to brief us. Thank you for that, DJ. Thank you, thank you, Chair. Uh, Dr. Polia will do that. Dr. Okay. Polia, let's, let's proceed. Thank you. Um, I'm just making sure that our honorable chairperson can see me. Um, <laughs> Not uh, only yeah. your honorable chairperson, the entire entourage, which is <laughs> in this meeting, let alone your, your chairperson. Thank you. <laughs> um, good morning. Okay, good Doc. morning. On, good morning, honorable chairperson. Uh, good morning to. We have seen you, honorable... doctor. If you have no problem, you can switch your video. We wanted to see the handsome face 
and beautiful <laughs> faces of la ladies. Uh, we've seen you, Doc. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable Chairperson. I'm not sure about the beautiful face, but at least handsome. you know it is. Handsome. It's, it, handsome. Oh, it's a handsome the beautiful, face. Beautiful, it okay. was DM. Beautiful <laughs> was DM. Your handsome okay. face. Thank you. <laughs> Thank a you, gentleman, thank you. Change. he's a gentleman. <laughs> thank you so much. Uh, at least you know it's a person behind the voice and it's not a robot uh, that's speaking. So I'll switch off my camera. So okay. once again, good morning and good morning to our deputy minister who is indeed very beautiful, not just today, but every day. Uh, good morning to our DG who's on the road, uh, hard at work as always. Uh, good morning to the DG of Sports, Arts and Culture, and, and good morning to all senior officials uh, from the three departments, Sports, Arts and Culture, Department of Justice, and Department of Basic Education. Uh, Honorable Chairperson, I, I think we are deeply encouraged to be part of this very exciting initiative, uh, promoting, and not just promoting, but installing sign language into the South African community and making it the 12th uh, official language. And, and like Deputy Minister has mentioned already, that uh, Department of Basic Education uh, has already commenced with using South African Sign Language as a language of learning and teaching. On, on the next slide, uh, we're saying that South African Sign Language is, is recognized uh, and utilized in our schools where it's needed. On the next slide, uh, Mr. Mahada, South African Sign Language uh, is used as a language of learning and teaching, and very important, uh, this is provided for in the South African Schools Act. So legislation has already, uh, or legislation already accommodates South African Sign Language. Uh, this provision, Honorable Chairperson, uh, is also reiterated in our language and education policy. So we have the legislation muscle to go ahead with South African Sign Language as the language or one of the languages of learning and, and teaching. Um, in addition to that, in order for South African Sign Language uh, to be taught on the next slide, uh, the South African Sign Language Home Language Curriculum and Assessment Policy Statement, on the next slide, Mr. Mahada, uh, was approved by the Council of Education Ministers uh, at a meeting held in 2014 already. So one can see that the Department of Basic Education has been forward-looking and our curriculum statement already embodies South African Sign Language as part of uh, the, the curriculum and as a language of learning and teaching. As, as mentioned by uh, the previous presenter, uh, a total of 47 schools for the deaf offer South African Sign Language as a home language. And what I want to say is that we also have deaf teacher assistants. Uh, the preferred arrangement, uh, particularly in our deaf schools, is that every teacher must be able to use sign language as the language of learning and teaching. However, in the case of some of our subjects, uh, particularly in the case of the science and the maths, where the teacher may be qualified in the content, but at the moment may not be competent in terms of sign language, and in such cases, we use a, so in such a case, the teacher assistant will facilitate and mediate through, through sign language. This is not the preferred arrangement, but one needs to understand that this is a new area and we're developing our capacity in terms of uh, a sign language. But by and large, all subjects are mediated uh, through sign language. In terms of providing support on, on the next slide, uh, we've developed uh, learning and teaching support material 
Uh, we've developed a study guide on the recording of essays and transactional texts uh, to help our learners in, in the schooling context. We've developed a, a DVD, which has all the terminology, so this can assist both learners and teachers. We have the Mind the Gap study guides that have been developed on the following genres, poetry, longer stories, as, as well as, as drama. Um, we're making good strides and we want to continue to make sure that we keep the tempo and the momentum going in terms of this particular area. I think our greatest achievement, honorable chairperson, is that South African Sign Language for the last three years is part of the National Senior Certificate Examination. So the DBE administers South African Sign Language as a formal examination uh, in both the June examination as well as the November examination. And the first South African Sign Language, Home Language examination was administered in 2018 and we started with 52 candidates. But I'm proud to announce Honorable Chair's person that for the 2022 uh, National Senior Certificate Examination, we have a total of 229 candidates. So that number has increased almost fourfold, and which is an indication that there is now a greater uptake and that the efforts in terms of promoting sign language are beginning to take root. And, and what is important to note is that South African Sign Language is offered in lieu of a home language. So a deaf learner uh, takes sign language as his home language. Remember, for a learner to attain uh, a national senior certificate, it must offer two languages. It's the home language and a first additional language. So in the case of the deaf learner, the sign language is regarded as his or her home language. On the next slide and the slides following, I provide some kind of an indication of how the exam has been run. Um, the question papers are set here at our offices at the Department of Basic Education under extremely secure condition. And the question paper will first be set on paper. Then it gets signed and it's done here at our offices. We have all the equipment. We have a recording studio where the question paper gets signed and video recorded. And that then gets copied onto DVDs. And those DVDs are then distributed under very secure conditions to all our provinces. And only on the morning of the examination will the DVD uh, with the question paper then uh, get distributed to the schools that will offer the South African Sign Language examination. Now, where we've managed to get it right is to make sure that the learner responses are also signed and recorded using uh, web technology. And that then gets recorded on a DVD. The DVDs are collected, they are kept secure, and then uh, during the marking session, uh, those DVDs are then marked by South African sign language, home language teachers. But what is very interesting is that all of this is done centrally now, and I'll tell you a little more about that. But before that, uh, school-based assessment, which is the assessment that is conducted by the teacher, is also part of the National Senior Certificate examination component. So we have what is referred to as school-based assessment, and then what in other languages is referred to as oral assessment. This is now the observing and signing, which also contributes a component of uh, the assessment contributing to the National Senior Certificate. Uh, moving on to the next slide, which is the preparation for the NSC examination. Um, in preparing learners and making sure that a national examination is not going to be daunting and a national examination is not going to be an obstacle, we provided learners with exemplars from grade 10 in terms of preparing them for the grade 12 exam. So exemplars were provided in grade 10, in grade 11, 
and then the first examination uh, in, in 2017. Um, question papers and, and backup papers for each November examination are uh, developed. So in case learners have a problem with the first examination because of power outages or other issues, we have a backup examination. Uh, we also developed guidelines. So teachers have a clear sense of what will be tested, what will be the format of, of the question paper so that our deaf learners are not disadvantaged in any way. We also provide very detailed guidelines in terms of the administration of the exam, given the fact that this exam has to be administered using specialized technology. And we want to make sure that the technology in no way serves as an impediment or, or as a barrier in terms of these learners. And therefore they granted exposure prior to the exam to all the technology. We also go to the extent of making sure that every center where the sign language examination uh, will be administered is audited. Um, so the content and the format of the question paper, as I mentioned earlier, is, is based on CAPS. Moving on to the next slide, um, once the exam is written, I spoke about uh, the signing responses of the learner, gets recorded on a DV, it's stored in a secure uh, environment until the marking. Now, in order to make sure that we have a common standard of marking across the whole country, uh, marking for South African Sign Language is done centrally in Pretoria under the direct supervision and management of uh, the DBE. Um, and, and we think that standardization is necessary given some of the variations which I'll allude to just now. We also think it's important that uh, we have this kind of standardization and marking takes place centrally. We are able to monitor the kind of responses that learners are providing. And that then serves as critical and vital feedback to teaching, learning, and assessment. So whatever gaps, uh, whatever flaws we pick up, we make sure that feeds back directly into uh, our schools so that we improve the quality of teaching and, and learners uh, and learning. Teachers and deaf teachers uh, in particular from schools that offer South African sign language, home language, are the ones that will be doing the marking because they understand the context and they are the ones that can make the most appropriate judgment. We also have IT support. We have interpreters that are also used during both the setting as well as the marking process. And with all of this, there's training to make sure that we do not compromise on the standard. On the next slide, I give you an indication of the numbers that have written, <coughs> excuse me, my apologies for that. Uh, the numbers that have written South African Sign Language from 2018. So 2018 was our first year. 2017 was when we provided them with exemplars so that they would be ready for the exam in 2018. And these are the numbers. And very interesting is that we have both part-time and full-time candidates. Part-time candidates will be candidates who may have written the examination previously, and they come in uh, to repeat uh, the examination. And, and you look at the numbers, uh, 58 in 2018, 98 in 2019, 135 in 2020, and uh, 150 odd in 2021. And now we're close to 260 uh, in 2022. So the numbers are increasing. And what is encouraging is looking at the pass rate. We've had over 90%, except for our part-time candidates and in 2020 and 2021, where they performed uh, below 90%. Um, now, as much as we have a pass percentage of over 90%, I still think there's a lot of work to be done. Um, I need to indicate that during the standardization process, there's been upward adjustment of marks, uh, just to make sure that the performance in South African Sign Language is in keeping with other languages. But the adjustments 
or the upward adjustments by Umalusi are on a declining scale so that we need to see more of the efforts of the learner coming to the fore uh, in, in future years. But the situation looks uh, pretty positive at the moment and, and we're hoping that we can just move forward uh, from this point. Despite the progress we've made, Honorable Chairperson, there are challenges that we are dealing with. And I think with any new innovation of this nature. Uh, thank you. Thank uh, you very and, much, and Honorable Chairperson. Given the environment sure in which beautiful we face, are operating, at least you know, this is one some. of the main challenges, particularly in terms of the content, uh, knowledge, assessment, and also understanding of, of CAPS. But we have regular training workshops uh, on CAPS, on assessment practice. And I'm glad that our universities have also now come on board and they will support us in terms of initial teacher uh, training and, and development. Uh, our limited pool of South African sign language teachers, but we find that this is also uh, on, on the rise and, and this is a positive sign as well. Um, dialectical differences has been a major challenge and, and I'm glad that we're talking about standardizing terminology and that's something we had to do was come up with a glossary of standardized signs that would be used in the exam paper and um, your deaf teacher or your deaf assistant will assist with some of these dialectical differences that may arise. Uh, the cost in terms of um, the equipment is, is also a, another challenge. The initial costs are, are high, um, Basic but education. we believe that the initial uh, investment is person, necessary. And I think we are deeply encouraged maintained to be part of this so that very exciting initiative. In future years. Uh, uh, literature is also an issue on the uh, next slide, limited literature available. But again, we are dependent on our higher education institutions to support us in, in this regard. Uh, in terms of setting the question paper, I mean, it takes a lot of effort. Uh, it's, it's a big investment on the part of the department, but I think over the last three years, we now have a clear management plan in terms of how we manage the setting, the moderation, the recording, and we've now got this to the required quality as, and standard so that our learners are not disadvantaged in any way. On the next slide, we provide you with the cost implication and, um, and the cost implication will, re will, re will, will relate to um, the personnel in terms of personnel required at national, provincial and district level. And we want to see more of our subject uh, specialists being appointed uh, in each of the provinces so that they can support our schools. And that's the amount that's required. They're almost 15 million. Professional development, another 10 million. LTSM, which is a major feature in this area, 25 million, and general deaf learner support programs, which are essential, another 5 million, and our examinations, given the fact that uh, one needs to prepare a DVD for every learner and one needs to have specialized equipment per learner, uh, that would then require another uh, 8 million, and that we're looking at a, a sum of 63 million which would be required to continue this program. And on the next slide, we indicate that in terms of uh, the activities, most of them are in progress, but we need to understand that all of these are ongoing activities and therefore it's a budget that's required annually. It's the support that needs to be provided annually. And, and that is the end of my short presentation, honorable chairperson, we requesting the portfolio committee uh, to take note of our contributions, which are still in their early stages, uh, but we can only move forward and improve on what we are doing from this point. Thank you very much, Honorable Chairperson. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Doctor. Uh, let me now, Honorable Members, uh, DGs, DTGs, the DM, to go to the second presentation from the Delegation of Justice and Conventional Services. Uh, also, we do welcome them. We are, we've welcomed the 
this other presentation to you, uh, Justice and Correctional Services. <clears throat> Do we have delegations of the Department of Justice and Correctional Services with us? Yes. Good morning, Chair. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, I was worried. Good morning, Chair. Morning. I don't see somebody who's greeting us. Good morning, Chair. Are you able to hear me? Yes, trying to <laughs> come nearer to your mic. Your voice is too soft. We do, I do hear you. Uh, Mebaloi, take us through. Yes, we are, yes, we, are, we are welcoming you, younger, younger. Okay. <laughs> Yes, um, good morning, Chair and colleagues. Um, as mentioned before, my name is Rahumudi Jebaloui, and I am the State Law Advisor for the Department of Justice and Constitutional Development, and I'll just be taking you through the justice, um, our presentation this morning. Do so. Um, I'm just gonna share my screen. Okay. All right. Um, okay, so just to take you through um, the purpose, um, the purpose of this presentation is to brief the Portfolio Committee on Sports, Arts and Culture on the background budgetary requirements and timelines on the inclusion of South African Sign Language as a top official language. Thank you for the procedure that we have followed um, up to date since the department first embarked on, on this constitutional amendment. The constitution and the rules of the National Assembly provides that a minister intending to introduce a constitution amendment bill in parliament must, before introducing the bill, comply with section 74, 5A and B, and this is in terms of the constitution. In terms of, in terms of section 74, 5, the minister intending to introduce the constitution amendment bill in parliament must publish the particulars of the bill and the publication must contain a notice stating the intention to introduce the Constitution Amendment Bill. Stakeholders must also be invited to submit of section 745 of the constitution to the provincial legislatures for their views. The commenting period in terms of the coming, the commenting period in terms of the bill will close on, um, this is supposed to be 31 August 2022, which is tomorrow. With that being said, after all the comments have been considered, um, 
and all views considered by the department. The department aims to introduce the bill into parliament by November 2020. Section six of the, so the relevant provisions of the constitution that deals with languages is section six of the constitution. Section six one recognizes the 11 official languages. Section six three A says that national and provincial governments may use any particular official language for the purposes of government taking into account usage, practicality, expense, regional circumstances and the balance of the needs and preferences of the population as a whole or in the province concerned. At least two official languages must be used. Section 6.3b states that municipalities must take into account the language usage and preferences of their residents. Section 6.4 states that all official languages must enjoy parity of esteem and must be treated equitably. Section 6.5 provides amongst other things that, a, that the Pan-South African Language Board in, established by national legislation must promote and create conditions for the development and use of all official languages, the Khoi, Nama, San languages and sign. In view of the aforementioned, amendments to section six of the constitutions were proposed. Clause one of the bill seeks to amend section six of the constitution by substitution for, six, for subsection one to cater for South African sign language to be included as an official language. Clause one also substitutes paragraph A of subsection five to cater for the deletion of sign language from this subsection, as its recognition as an official language caters for its promotion and conditions for its development and use. Clause two of the bill refers to the short title and commencement and provides amongst others that the act comes into operation on a date fixed by the president by proclamation in the Gazette. The bill also contains measures to promote the rights, languages and cultural rights that is of people with hearing disabilities. The department has met with a number of other departments to inform them of the proposed amendment. The Forum of South African Directors General which is foresaid, was also briefed so as to ensure that all departments are alerted to begin their preparation for implementation. The Office of the Chief State Law Advisor also indicated that provisions of the, of the bill are consistent with the constitution and drafted in the form and style which conforms to legislative practice. The bill was developed in conjunction, in conjunction with the participation of the Department of Sports, arts and culture, tourism, culture, and the presidency. The department also consulted with the South African Language Board, with the Pan-South African Language Board, as well as other, other organizations representing the deaf communities. On the issue of budgetary requirements, there are financial implications for the implementation of the bill. However, this must be determined and approved by each implementing department or entity. These financial implications relate to sourcing sign language practitioners at um, social events, um, meetings, community engagements, and et cetera. This also caters, this also just mentions that the department must also look at how service delivery to the, to the deaf community will also be catered for respectively. With lack of proper planning, inadequate or no development of implementation plans and financial implications will lead to poor implementation of the recognition of South African Sign Language as an official language. So it's therefore important that the different implementing institutions 
be aware of what needs they will provide to, to, to the public, especially the deaf community who utilizes their services. In terms of our recommendation, we would just like the Portfolio Committee on Sports, Arts and Culture to note the status of the Constitution 18th Amendment Bill 2020, 2022, sorry. And um, thank you, Chair, that is all from my side. Um, thank you, Ms. Maloy. Uh, honorable members, can I take this opportunity to tell you that uh, with short and very informative uh, presentation, uh, this department gave us this um, presentation past nine last night. Uh, I, I did just keep quiet. I was thinking that honorable members, they will be noting that. Uh, with us in this committee, we don't take a presentation on the night of the uh, day of following day of the presentation. Uh, and when I, it was arrived, uh, and when I was reading it, I was saying I felt that honorable members for the first time uh, will not say that we don't accept this, but our, our way of doing things in this committee, uh, we want a presentation to be uh, forwarded in time. Uh, it was a very short presentation and with very informative information, which is very important in both sister departments. But in future, as this committee, we don't take a presentation or overnight. Usually, we just say that no one is going to accept. So it's just warning rules of this a committee. Uh, thank you, honorable members. Thank you, Ms. Thank you. Honorable members, on that note, uh, I, I, I don't want that you must remind me why did I allow. And surely, if you good selves, uh, you didn't want to make an issue because this is the first time that we are having our sister departments, but also the, we do have time frames. Uh, if you 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 heard and you were ready last night, uh, they also have time frames of two. So thank you for understanding, honorable members. Uh, in that note, can I take this um, opportunity that uh, now uh, I want to to go back uh, to honorable members. This is time for. Uh, questions, preparations, suggestions, and in advance, I'm thanking all the presenters now this time for our own members uh, for asking clarification questions and uh, input of the members. Uh, I'm, I'm taking hands, uh, Honorable uh, Honorable Sibia, uh, Honorable Ayman, why is the head of the co -host? But what do you want? Honorable Sondi. Uh, Honorable Veronica. Uh, my name is also up chair, Dennis Joseph. Thank you. Uh, Adams. Uh, Honorable Marshall Honorable Dennis. So far, Honorable members have been doing uh, can somebody take off the, the presentation our screens? Thank you so much. Yes, to allow me to give them us. Uh, Thank you, Chair. Chair, welcome the presentation. And now I want to raise the point of order. Now I thought that now and then I presented the order, not the other Now I was quite because it's unlike us allowing the presentation to come. Because people think when I point and point off on, off on myself, because I was right, sure, because we let things go, because we fight the wars, sometimes we let them, because you can't win all the best. But nonetheless, <laughs> the committee allowed it, I'll keep quiet, because when I raised it, and I wanted to be noted, because we, it's not our, our, our tendency to let a presentation come nine o'clock at night, 
and it's uncalled for. I don't know why is the Department of Justice taking us for granted or are they doing things like that? Now, one of the things that I wanted to find out regarding the bill. Just a moment, Honorable Jongo. I'm happy, Honorable Jongo, that we are raising it, uh, supporting what I've noticed. And thank you that uh, you maybe you, you kept quiet because. As I was saying, that maybe they don't know that our norm in this country we don't take presentation. It's just this one we were just forgotten. And at uh, 2101, uh, they've forwarded. Uh, thank you for, for, for that honorable control. Uh, I wanted to raise, even if you were, you were raising it, I was going to uh, support on behalf of the community that that's the way that uh, we are working on. But uh, thank you for that. Now let's get to it. Next time they want to do it. <laughs> Thanks for interjection, Chief. But nonetheless, I support you. But nonetheless, it's a call for, for the department to talk about it, uh, about the principle, but there's poor power participation on it. And they must know that you get a uh, Gazette the Bill July tomorrow, it's that day, and you think there's effective public participation. As they tell us, what about the principle? And how do they implement the effective public participation? Because this is poor participation in my view. And I think I, I want to support it. And I've noted that they think that uh, consultants, the last presentation, uh, the thing, consulted committee. This committee was only consulted last night, nine o'clock. This is the same thing, and that's you talk about the department, not committee. Now, tell us what is effective public participation. What do you draw in? What can be used to call it a month? It's an effective public participation. Where's that really principle? I think that are mining that really principle. Chair, on, on the on the panel, I wanted to find out can confirm they have 13.5 million rand. You can tell us which joint actually with the department uh, that 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 had uh, partnership with the coaches, different coaches. Can the department give us how many languages was that has to date uh, given to send under SASL? What is the nature of the on the proposed budget established by South African uh, Professionals Council? Will South African Professionals Council establish? Will the department consider the global and social cohesion program to target twenty years of racism? A person, can they just why did they just resign? And the pencil. And one thing I wanted to find out: we have members on this meeting today. The pencil. And how many are they? If they are, for now we have a second. Thank you very much. Thank you, Honourable Shongo. The next Honourable Member is Sibia. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Okay, thanks for the uh, and with the, um, I don't know if late, uh, I don't know if was the delay, because of the, 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 the minutes were uh, late yesterday. And I, I, I don't know, it is emphasized that the work with parents of the children. Is, is always being encouraged and will always taking place in other places. But I, I, I'm not uh, clear how are the, the, entire, the entire communities going to be encouraged not to undermine this language and to understand what, what is it about uh, so that they are not going to be undermined as deep children. I don't know a strategy to engage the, the, the community. The other one, how has the South African language for collaborative with the Department of Basic Education in developing the South African sign language, home language, curriculum, and assessment policy statements and its continuous development. I think it is. Okay, thank you. I'm sorry, I did go to the um, next one. Is on the next one, and good morning to the honorable members uh, and the pressure on the meeting. Can't hear you, please. You can't hear me. I don't know. Oh, I can hear you now. Can you? Yes. Oh, we do hear him. Yeah. Hello. see, uh, uh, we welcome uh, the presentations. Um, we don't hear you. Don't hear. I don't know what's going on. Uh, come uh, or uh, look at your budget and try to get your volume. Hey, hey. You want me to play No. Hey, look, I'm going to
Thank you very much. I'm the last one. Now he's looking at me off his screen. Okay. Yeah, I think that would be strong on the on the on the comments. And I don't know whether it's my guy. You think um just uh being a fool is uh uh thing I wanna get on the only thing he lives on. Can I say a moment? In, uh, I want to interject to you. Yeah. It was, we all had a problem. Yeah. Uh, it was not opened really. Uh, if it didn't, uh, even our secretaries, they were trying to open, and until we try other means of uh, getting away from our emails, I don't know how did I get it to, to my um, WhatsApp, because uh, Ujab was saying, hey, maybe myself and Honorable Adam Zoe were reporting. He said, maybe uh, we are challenged with the technology outside. Now, I'm, I'm not challenged. So you, you are correct. Uh, that's the end of my uh, presentation. But uh, I've apologized to you all the problem that we allowed that you saw on this presentation. But uh, really, they didn't do that to us. But the way of not adhering would have was we saw in, in in two three days, if only last night. Uh, maybe those are reasons that this moment we don't uh, want to take the late presentation. We just hope that we're not ready to come to us. We'll just not do it. But nonetheless, uh, on members, apologies of the members that they didn't access in this important um, uh, presentation, which really went out reading. I've noticed even the time frames. And according to this committee, we had this program long ago, and we're aware that uh, the, the invitation to the department and the central department went out earlier. Our apologies also we have got those problems. Let's just say that it won't happen again. Thank you so much. So please allow me to. Uh, to which the Honorable Deputy Minister of uh, Pesce took a beautiful, beautiful yes. uh, as the uh, uh, department of 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 of, of the languages and uh, the church. I don't have much um, uh, the comments uh, made by the uh, I think on uh, and, and and the chair with that. Uh, just one question, one comment. Chair, how will the department ensure that all public and private institutions that they are along with Pesce to use South African sign language? Uh, the, uh, comment. the department's 2022-23 annual performance plan uh, prepared the presentation to the committee. It is noted that the department has embarked on a project to digitalize South African sign language. And this is the development of an South African language and in Africa, which is in the sign language. Uh, present. The social media is that RA signed uh, and publication uh, should be commented. It facilitates communication between the hearing and non hearing as in South Africa. Chair, a better for now. Yeah, um, Honorable Van Dyke. Honorable Member. Thank you, sir. I'm just taking the link. Thank you. It's a beautiful picture. <laughs> Thank you. I, I'm not thinking that you do. What's the answer? <laughs> Presentation, I have a few shifts. First question is uh, how will the Department of Interest provide greater opportunity to uh, cultural workers and language practitioners? What no action um, from the Department to appoint these language practitioners um, in um, sign language? Um, how many need to be appointed to um, do the research that was done for them? Um, I think what uh, I will also ask, I also want to be very busy with my Pan African language. Um, I thought of uh, the Pan African language to um, tell how the body will use that sign language to the right for the Muslim language. Um, I specifically mentioned this, um, and I have been served um, recently that it was uh, the information here between uh, Syrian sign languages as well as uh, indigenous languages. And I have specifically tried to affect the third person and ask uh, why we don't see any media statement either uh, in demand, either abroad or the entity to the tax. That is a huge concern. In, Thank you very much. Allow me to make a 
uh, because my network is very private. Just saw so it, you once saw it when you did. Uh, Thank you, yes. Chairman. Yes, beautiful. Uh, you allow me to okay. put uh, it off. You're not in bed. Video. Yes. What is on the computer? You're not in bed. <laughs> No, no, she's not. Uh, no, no, don't no, no. Thank you, Chairperson. Uh, <laughs> good morning to all invitees on the platform, uh, department staff, and honorable members. I saw the presentation and Chairperson, the Timothy, my question was already raised because I couldn't hear uh, them clearly. But the question is um, how is the department with a higher education and the Department of Science and Vision of 4 IR technology developed to digitize every uh, sign, language, and encourage innovation uh, in the area? Sound as uh, language. And then, uh, Chairperson, my other questions are to basic education. Do post school education institutions have adequate facilities to support the continued learning of deaf students? And does the department want to transition post schooling? Next one, are the number of schools in Naka the need? And how does it ensure the learners with special needs need far from deaf schools? What is the experience of the department in the development of South Africa sign language? For education purposes, how can South Africa sign be taught to the raw community in impact? I'm almost done. Does the department think learn should be taught this of South Africa sign language in this is uh, used as my last one? What is the level of the department of the department of education with the education of South Africa sign language development and this uh, innovation in the area and what outcomes are affected? I thank you, Chairperson. Uh, thank you, Honorable. Uh, this honorable member on the list is Honorable Marjorie Gosi. Police. Any on the leader from Pennsylvania uh, uh, is the recent go on. Do you feel? I'm just answering that we please on them. Okay. Welcome to the presentation. The problem of the young, especially black children from poor background, not being able to read and write in their mother tongue. What is the thing about that? And what could be the remedy if they end up in it? So, the person should not be provided to you for special communicating in through television. It should face every program that appears on our television, be it adverts and everything about others. Why must anything on our team if it is not provided for the sound language. Uh, if the population is definitely more than the right population, uh, we need to be provided such a limit for lives. Uh, it doesn't need a waste of money to sign language to a song that is for the mind of the torture and murder of our people in our people. That's uh, the same song that embedded our answer. It is a waste of time and money in time. <laughs> um, Chairperson, for the last presentation, I think it is uh, not correct for them to say that he, uh, they have consulted the committee. I think it was rushed. I think it was last night. Chairperson. I'm going to call attention to the next one. The next one is Ms. Patrick Denise. Thank you, Chairperson. Uh, thank you, and thank you for the presentation. I just would like to um, make a picture. According to the vice president, um, this um, in the point of the start of 2016, the National Youth Committee was by by the Africa and also the National Assembly had this um, show uh, under view. There is a issue, and I think what we as, as a committee, for a committee, and as a government is to, uh, to introduce uh, the current and next generation. So there's quite a bit with um, But yes, I think the chance now is how do we um, make it compatible for uh, the constitution or the other um, amendments so to make it a uh, legal. Uh, Chairperson and of our department, um, and this is very important the role that we must play. Um, whether our nation is in this or community, I think it's I think it's ignorance. That um, that they to respond to the to I'm covered with many just want to know uh, how the higher education will be funded uh, for certain and, and the other way the they must they must do. It's important when we develop and which they develop it to the highest high even intentional one. My question is are, are we already connected with this uh, since sixteen and the in the uh set work has gone because any national bodies like my ten or weeks for experience and of course funding the common that we build you know. And um, another question, Chairperson, um uh, what will the role be of the process? Initially, after 94, uh, some of the not all uh, X amount of languages that is useful to cause and people of that province. So, I would like to into provincial uh, states, seeing uh, people across the country. Um, I know the, the chance and gate uh, slides they put up is very interesting. I appreciate it. And I want to ask a question about the cost of the 63 million dollars. Is the way I understand it was LT is and the cost out of six million. The cost from the 63 million. It's raised in funding will go to him, and I just would like to say what 
that is cheaper. And then last point, uh, ways um, is association and the, the man that the department will help um, and the programs to to um, this folks um, the interact between um, between the those who the count here. Yeah. But overall, um, chairperson, I think comes back for us now to move forward and really get the the constitution changed so that we can um, we can we can have equality and equal before law and equal as you as stated in most of the printers. I thank you, chairperson. Thank you, Honorable Chair. Yeah. I'm going to switch off my because of the challenge. Okay, present you. Thank you. Let me also welcome the presentation to our lovely team from the base education, our honorable members from the different departments, and our own staff of the committee. Uh, my question will be based on the on the department of the department and take to my stakeholders to support the department's initiative. Also, that will, the department have to request uh, further appreciation for its medium term expenditure to respond to the protected six point nine million. Or will it be prioritized funds with its allocation? Also, issue of the Department of issues. I want just to emphasize on the issue say, how is the department prepared to make sure that the issue of language that everyone may be within the community will have the basic of using AMA is a language? Thank you, Chair. That question was covered. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Roman. Honorable Mabulu. Education and training system, we have the director of education and monitoring the pool at the report. 